Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Chasing Dreams podcast. Today, I have Miss Kalia Cross, and we are talking about firing your boss, okay? <laughs> I will let her introduce herself. Let the people know what you got going on. Hey, guys. My name is Kalia Cross. Um, I go by K Cross the Boss on Instagram, and I am a serial entrepreneur, so I have multiple businesses. Um, I'm a distributor for a company called Total Life Changes. It's a health and wellness company. I also co-own two businesses with my dad. Uh, one of them is Good Credit America, where we help businesses um, with their personal credit. And the other one is Business Credit Finances, Business Credit Financing. And we help small businesses. Um, and we also provide coaching with business credit. Um, and also, I am a real estate investor. I have an Airbnb in Charlotte, um, some properties um, in North Carolina, and then also in New York as well. Okay, come through serial yeah. entrepreneur. So yes. I got a little bit of everything going on. Yes, yes. So I like to start off every conversation by asking, what is the dream for you? So my dream is freedom, right? So a lot of people say financial freedom, but mine is freedom, right? My dream is to have peace. My dream is to be able to come and go as I please with the people that I love, right? Yeah. So yes. it's just to have peace and freedom. That's my dream. When did you realize the dream and how has it changed over the years? So I think I probably realized it when I um, left my corporate job uh, about two years ago. Yeah. And I've always been the type of person who wanted to do whatever I wanted to do, right? Because who doesn't want to do whatever they want to do? Exactly. Um, so once I fired my boss um, and became an entrepreneur, I realized that, you know, the liberty to just do whatever you want is just, you know, once you get a taste of that freedom, you so like, don't ever want to go back. You, you create <laughs> things to do, right? You create jobs, you create revenue, and you find it in any way possible. So you don't have to be constricted, right? You don't have wow. to be conformed to someone else's dream. Girl, you are preaching to the choir, okay? <laughs> I'm coming up on almost one year as a full-time entrepreneur um, at the time of recording this. And when I tell you, there are times I've tried to go back and I'm like, but do right. I? <laughs> right. right. And I had to hold myself accountable and say those moments where I'm like doing job search and all of the things um, was more so out of fear. Right. And just recognizing, like, I'm walking in my purpose, and I don't take that blessing for granted. Like, I'm right. literally, I have the honor of doing what I was called to do. Right. And like most, most of us, right, we go to college, right? And our dream job, right, we right. We're focus on that. And, you know, society is telling us that this is the way we, everything's supposed to be, right? Because we're all looking for the American dream. So, you know, our entire years, right? We've been targeted from the first time we've ever seen a commercial that, you know, this is how you're supposed to live your life. This is how things are supposed to go. So, you know, we just get programmed and we just, yeah. you know, life goals. And then yeah. Yeah. there go our dreams, so right? I get in the, this habit of what society or family or pressure, friends, pressure from your friends are telling you what your life should look like. Right. Right. Sure. And then you get, you get caught, you get caught up. Absolutely. So how did you make the decision to leave your corporate job initially? So I left my corporate job. Right. And I want to say that it was the biggest mistake. Ooh, let's talk <laughs> biggest about mistake. it. Yes. <laughs> um, ever. Right. So I left my corporate job, um, with the, I want to say it was more emotional, right, than like thought out, right? I didn't have a plan to leave my job, right? I went to my boss, right? So I worked with a group of financial advisors, right? So I did portfolio management um, at Merrill Lynch, right? And it was my dream job. I started my career at Bank of America, worked my way up. I was a manager. I managed people on a trade desk, um, I was working in New York City, right? I was living in a 
fancy apartment in New York City. In the finance industry. For sure. Yes. And um, when I went for the interview, I actually left my shoes um, at home, right? So I got to New York City. Um, I was at Penn Station. I went to Kmart because it was the only thing open that early in the morning. And I went and bought a pair of shoes. They were like $12.99. They looked at so cheap, but I didn't care. Um, at the time, <laughs> at the time, the Pope was um, visiting the city. So it was crazy. So not only did I not have my shoes, but traffic was crazy. So here I am running, you know, to my interview, but I'm like, this is my dream job. Like I have to make it, I have to show up. So I get there, crush the interview. I got the job and um, I loved it. I love my job. I used to go to work 7.30 a.m. every morning. I lived in New York City eventually. So I would walk to work every day. Just, just love, right? Okay. Um, happy hour with my friends, but it Living came to a time. Huh? Living the life. Living a life. Like, I was happy, right? We used to go to happy hour on rooftops or whatever. So it came to a time when, um, you know, I wanted to have additional income, right? So I'm smart, right? I went to college, right? Um, my bosses were millionaires, right? I could see, like, you know, they, they were millionaires, right? And they were making a lot of money, right? So I wanted to make a lot of money, right? I wanted to be a millionaire. Like, why couldn't I be a millionaire? So... Um, and I found that in order for me to move up in the company, I always had to, uh, get an extra, some extra degrees, not degrees, but like, um, creditations, right? Mm -hmm. I had to do this. I had to do that. Or I would have to take a step back in order to take a step forward. Mm -hmm. So I went to my boss and I was like, Hey, can I get a raise? <laughs> you know, I finally worked my way up to asking for a raise. And, you know, my boss was just like, it doesn't really work that way. So I was like, wow, like, you know, I really feel like I deserve this, but you know, I'm getting this. So I thought about it. Um, and then I went to my family who is super, super supportive. And they were like, you don't need that job. Right. My mom was like, you don't need that job. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I don't need that job. Right. Correct. So I put in my two weeks and my boss was just like, um, Someday I'll work for you. And I was like, someday you will work for me. It didn't, it didn't happen yet, but I don't know, maybe it will happen. But, um, but then, you know, I decided like, that I was going to um, create financial um, wealth for my family because my dad was always an entrepreneur. My older brother, he owns a car dealership. He's a co-owner of a car dealership in West Palm Beach. And, um, you know, I was already in real estate. I wasn't really doing a whole bunch of stuff with it, but I had some, uh, I owned a condo. Oh no, I didn't, I bought my condo later, but um, I owned a commercial property in Kings Mountain. Um, we have a Airbnb in Charlotte, which I actually turned into a Airbnb. It was just a, a property that wasn't making any money. Mm -hmm. um, so I had, you know, other things that I could do, right? So I could work on, you know, helping my dad become a millionaire versus you know, my boss, right? So I had those other things lined up. I just didn't have a plan, you know, to work them other, those other resources, um, those other things that I had lined up. So I advise against doing it that way. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that's how I, that's how I made the decision to quit my job. It was more emotional than strategic right so yeah the first time I fired my my boss my decision was very emotional and I was like Ooh. um so I was in the process of becoming a real estate agent mm -hmm. and I was working for Bank of America at the time and the real estate firm that I was gonna work for um the owner because it was a a, a person a privately owned and he was one of our customers mm -hmm. He came in the bridge running his mouth to my boss that I was about to be a real estate agent. I'm like, all right, but I ain't think nothing of it because I ain't know it was no issue, right? Right. So then I get pulled in the office and they were like, well, you need to decide. And I was like, and they right. basically said it was a conflict of interest and, you know, all wow. of that. And I was like, okay, well, you know, once I get licensed, I'll go ahead and, you know, put in my notice. Right. That's basically what they told me. They were like, you either need to stop pursuing this or mm -hmm. as soon as you get licensed, you need to let us know and that, that'll be your notice. Wow. But here's the emotional part. Right. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, know, I know what's coming. Girl, after this conversation, 
um, with my area manager. So my mm-hmm. area manager came in to tell me this. I was like, oh, this is a real issue. Okay. Right. So after this conversation, I gave my schedule to my branch manager. So the classes were like um, Wednesday and Saturday, maybe. And, you know, branch right. closed on Sunday. So she was like, well, that's not going to work. Um, there's no way you can only work four days a week and, you know, all of the, and I was like, so then I'll be quitting. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, right. I think the classes started on like November 1st. So I was like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, October, I, no, whatever date it was, it wasn't enough for two weeks notice. Right. I was like, mm, so that'll be my last day. Exactly. Like, oh, uh, uh, well, uh, well, you have to give us two weeks notice. And, blah, blah, blah. and I was like, so then you need to accommodate this schedule because I've already paid for the class. Right. This train is running. <laughs> yeah. Right. But in hindsight, like, I wish I would have, um, one, made a sale first. Right. <laughs> and it, it took a couple tries to get licensed because that mm-hmm. class is no joke. So I would, wish I would have, like, not just started the class, but, like, right. well, let's make some money here first, you know? Um, and as I transitioned into full-time entrepreneurship the second time, I was right. a little more strategic, but even still, if I had to do over again, I would still do it differently. I'm like, right. Right. <laughs> there's no right. way to really know. Um, but I tell my clients, I'm like, these are the things I wish I would have known. So what mm-hmm. advice would you give to someone who's in a similar situation or maybe they, maybe they don't love their job? Maybe they're right. frustrated at work. Like, what advice would you give about that process? So basically, I would say start a business, right? Keep your day job, right? Keep your day job, start a business on the side, right? And get, earn some revenue from that side business. Um, It should be an online business. I think so. You should, it should be an online business because there's a lot of um, things that you don't have to pay for, right? Like, if you have a brick and mortar, you know, you're creating expenses before you've even made any revenue. So I would advise to start a business, make it an um, a online business, right? Because it's scalable. You can reach so many different audiences. You can reach people in Hong Kong or, or so forth. You're not just, you know, the people around you or local or national. Um, so start a business. Um, make sure that your revenue is... Um, consistent right because you can start a business tomorrow and be broke the very next day right you can start a business today and be broke a year from today so make sure that your business is has is generating consistent income right so like in my situation um i had my airbnb right so when i quit my job i went to charlotte i turned my investment property into an airbnb and i was consistently making thirty five hundred dollars a month so i'm like yeah, I quit my job. I quit this. I quit this, this, and it's working out. I'm making thirty five hundred dollars a month. But let's fast forward, right? Um, it's COVID nineteen, and all of my cancellations. I mean, all of my bookings are canceled. So here I am making a consistent thirty five hundred dollars a week. I mean, a month, and now it's down to zero. Now that it's COVID nineteen, um, so. You know, being able to be um, getting some, you know, consistent income. Another thing is if I had stayed at my job, right, I was making good money, right? Don't get me wrong. I was, you know, making six figures, right? Um, But had I stayed in that job maybe like a year or two, I would have been able to get some revenue to put in, to invest, you know, into a business or to finance my expenses until I really figured it out, right? So, um start a business, right? Get some skills, right? Start a business like the business um, that I'm doing, which is one of my businesses is Total Life Changes, right? It's a health and wellness company. And um, one way that you get paid, it's drop ship, right? So you sell a product, you get $20, right? The company ships it out. I don't have any inventory. Um, I don't even have to touch the product, right? All I have to do is market it and I'm making money, right? So Having a business like that where you can generate quick income, you know, stack it um, is very important as well because, you know, you don't have all of those additional expenses. Um, And then having multiple streams, like I still have um, like multiple streams of income. So in the event that one of them, one of my industries is like failing, like I was saying, my Airbnb, 
you still have other things to fall back on. In my situation, it's, um, you know, the health and wellness company, Total Life Changes that I'm a part of. Yeah. But this, starting your own business, having some skills in marketing, having some tool skills in business, right? Because a lot of people have good ideas, but they don't necessarily know how to um, make, earn revenue from them, right? And if you don't know how to make a sale, you're not in business, right? And if you don't know how to market, then there's no way you're going to make a sale, right? You can sell to your family and friends, but you're only going to go but so far. Exactly. Um, having a consistent revenue before you, before you decide to move on, knowing what your expenses are, knowing what that number is that's going to allow you to be able to quit that job. But most importantly, having a well thought out plan. Yes. Yes, yes, that is so true. So when I think about like my transition this time around, mm-hmm. I side hustled for three years. Right, side you know hustled. I mean? Like you gotta work out the kinks. You gotta figure things out. Yep. Um, because my first first couple coaching clients uh, were free. My first right. couple events were free. My first couple speaking engagements were free. And, and it's because you need to build up that experience, build up yeah. that repertoire. But if I had quit my job and started the business tomorrow, like there is a lot of kinks that you need to figure out first. Right. And having right. that consistent income allows you to invest in the business, mm-hmm. allows you to get into um, a space where you can manage both. But if you're working a job that you hate and you just can't stand, or maybe the schedule is, is grueling. Like when I started my business, I was working anywhere upwards of 70 hour work weeks. Right. One salary. So that ain't even overtime. You right. Know I mean? Right. Um, so that was a lot for me. Yeah. I still dedicated time to my business, mm-hmm. but I recognize like, no, the business isn't ready to support me yet, but mm-hmm. I can find a different job that will allow me to better manage both. Right. And then sometimes it's a matter of keeping your eye right on that goal and just really, 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 really believing like, look, it's going to get bad. It'll be bad before it gets great. Right. So I have a goal and I'm focused like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is what I'm going through today. But like my goal is much, much deeper. Right. My goal is much further than what's going on in this job every day. Yeah. You know, so if you can just, you know, um, hold on, you know, just, just make it through, right? Because you know that at the end of the rainbow, right, there's a pot of gold, right? Exactly. Which is your freedom, right? For you to do what it is that you enjoy. Yes, for sure. So how did you figure out what your passion is or passions are? So I think that I've always been in the finance industry. Like Mm -hmm. it has just always been something that I've always um, just stuck to or just cling to. Like everything that I think of is just like in finance, like no matter what it is, no matter what industry, like, you know, Airbnb, right. That's not really finance, but like some way I made it finance, right. Mm -hmm. How much, is my expenses, right? How much am I going to spend on um, putting into this Airbnb versus getting what, what's going to be my revenue that I'm going to be getting out of it, right? So everything that I, like, I just think in numbers. I just think about finance. Like, whenever, whatever it is that I'm doing, like, my strategy is, my strategy is always financial. Um, and I enjoy it. Like, every single business that I've ever been in, every, like, I actually started a brand. It's called the very black activity. And this is the shirt that I'm wearing. And my best friend is my business partner. Her name is Tracy cadet. And you know, when we started this business a year ago, our roles, she's a marketing person just automatically trans transitioned into she's doing marketing and I'm doing finance, like just organically. Um, so I think for me it was organic. Um, and then having the experience behind it, just, really you know made it stick and made it made me believe like yes this is your passion yes 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 and that is such a great uh segue um to the importance of partnerships so next week on on the podcast my business partner will be on um but we're so we're in we're similar so he's Mm -hmm. with marketing um it's not my forte i'm a very great person but like Mm -hmm. I'm introverted. I don't, you know, like it's just right. not a trend. But I'm very good with the operational side. 
Mm. So, and part of the conversation that I had with him when we were recording was a matter of like, I know my strengths and he mm-hmm. knows his strengths. Mm-hmm. And so together, like we run the nonprofit Life After Loss together. Mm-hmm. And through that, like the nonprofit gets the best of both worlds. Like right. it's our very best because mm-hmm. we stick to what we're great at. And right. not, like, yes, I could figure out marketing. Yes, right. we could be structured and organized, but it's not what we're best at. And we stick right. to what we're best at. Mm-hmm. And that allows that partnership to continue to grow and thrive. And the nonprofit benefits from it time and time again. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. That's so, funny because me and my um, best friend, we were just talking about, actually, I woke up this morning and I was like, we should do a segment on um, why you should never go in business with your bestie, right? <laughs> um, but it's just a play on, you know, um, it can actually work out, right? Yeah. If yeah. you stick to, you know, your strengths and your strengths, um, it can actually work out, so. Absolutely. I would mm-hmm. say be careful going into business with friends, like go and mm-hmm. do it strategically. Um, right. And because I've had a situation where I almost lost a friendship because right. I had to go, we, we're good friends. We mm-hmm. have similar passions and we tried to make it work as a business. Right. It was like, whoa. Right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the same situation that we're, we were in, um, but we were able to work it out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, for sure. So what would you yeah. say is your number one secret to success? My number one secret to success is do the work. Just period. Do the work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Drop the mic. Real you can quick. plan, 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 right? You can get as many cute planners as you want, right? You can write down your to-do list a million times a day. And it means Create nothing. your marketing strategy, blah, 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 right? But if you don't do the work, it means you, absolutely- you will not be successful. Can I tell you that's one of my business pet peeves? <laughs> like, honestly and there because i'm such a giver by nature there are so many people who call me and be like hey can i pick your brain about this hey can we talk about this hey and like especially with like family and friends Mm -hmm. i don't mind you picking my brain as long as it's planned in a hit in advance because i need to be prepared again i'm an introvert i need Mm -hmm. to be prepared (laughs) i need my energy needs to be in advance like Mm -hmm. right cool we could don't call me randomly and be like hey can i pick your no, baby. No. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. What's your I'm, sign? I'm a Libra. Libra. Okay. October. October 11th. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so my biggest pet peeve is if you pick my brand, because I'm a business coach. Like, that's one mm-hmm. of the things that I do. Cool. Don't mind it. Love helping. Love supporting. But I need to see receipts. Right. Particularly if I'm giving you free advice. Right. I need you to show me proof of concept. I need to see what we talked about, some version of what, mm-hmm. like, you ain't got to do what I said. I need right. to do something. Right. Because don't come back. Don't come back when okay. I already told you what to do. Okay. And there's there's someone in my life, and I'm, I'm going to leave the who out, but someone in my life who I very much care about and definitely want to see succeed but I had to start putting up boundaries. Like, we're not going to have this. One, we're not going to repeat the same conversation. Right. Two, right. we're not going to further the conversation if you still haven't done the last thing we talked about. Mm-hmm. You, Absolutely. And Absolutely. you don't spend hours of my day talking yep. about anything. So mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Yep. We're just not. We're just not. And especially when you, have, you, you now have created a track record of not doing the things that you said you wanted to do. Yep. I just, yeah. my, my energy can be used in a direction of what's productive. Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. So do, do no. it as Nike says. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. yes, ma'am. So do you have any final thoughts for us as the audience? Um, I would just say if you are considering firing your boss, um, consider it twice. It's definitely a great idea but make sure you have a plan, right? Make sure you have a way to um, generate revenue and consistently. Hello. Okay. Yep. And know what your number is. What is that number that's going to get you there? What is it? 
Absolutely. And that's one of the things that I look at, like with me being a full-time entrepreneur, I have to make a certain number to make sure my bills are good. Yep. Like, know your number. You got to know. That number is hit. We can start doing the saving and the, the, the fun and all these other things. But until that number is hit every month, Yep. you know? Yeah. So this has been a great conversation. Where can I agree? Where can everyone find you? Keep up with what you have going on, etc. Let us know. So my Instagram is K Cross the Boss. Um, same thing on Facebook, K Cross the Boss. Um, you can find me there. Um, and that's usually where I where I am. Yes. yes Social yes. media. That's like. The direction that marketing is going into so absolutely so definitely make sure y'all hit her up if you need some financial help holla at her okay yes, um, y'all, that's not my natural gifting i'm working right. on it but it ain't my natural and the crazy part my mom's an accountant and has had her oh, business God. for 20 years <laughs> so how that gifting didn't translate i don't know but i'm working on it <laughs> You definitely have you have to have a certain mind for it that's definitely for sure yeah right. um, so I'm, I'm working on my mindset we're working on it but in the meantime go holla at her k cross the boss and she'll get you together okay we will <laughs> thanks guys. thank you so much i really enjoyed this segment absolutely thank you for being here have a great one you too